All right, so now we can start talking about the types of bonds. So atoms can only attach themselves in certain ways. And so the way they attach themselves is through bonds. And so different atoms form different bonds with different other atoms, right? And so basically the types of bonds breaks down into two categories. There's ionic and there's covalent. And so these exhibit two different behaviors. And so with ionic, it's gonna be a metal bonded to some non-metals, at least one non-metal. And so with covalent, it's a non-metal and a non-metal. So as long as you can remember that, you can distinguish right away whether something is ionically bonded or covalently bonded. And so let's look at some examples. So with ionic over here, we see the first one is sodium chloride. This one is very important. You'll see this many times. It's the number one example. So if I go to the, to the periodic table, where is sodium? It's over here on the left. And if you're on the left, you're a metal, right? Except for hydrogen. But we know sodium is a metal. And then after a couple of weeks, we'll know a good amount of these just by memory. And so sodium, right away we see sodium, metal, right? So ionic. And so just to verify, it's bonded with chlorine which is over here on the right. And so if it's on the right, it's a non-metal. So we know that metal, non-metal, this has to be an ionic bond. And so the same thing with iron oxide. Iron is a popular metal. We know that one's a metal. Oxygen, we know that's not a metal, right? So metal, non-metal, ionic. And then this one, what is K? Okay, let me go to the table. Uh, there it is, K, potassium. It's on the left. It's a metal. What is S? Okay, let me look for it. Oh, there it is. It's on the right. Sulfur, non-metal. So metal, non-metal, ionic bond. Zinc, metal here in the middle. So zinc's a metal. I know those are non-metals. This has to be ionic, All right? So that's kind of the basic idea. And so now with covalent, we see it's a non-metal and a non-metal. So in covalence, you're not gonna see any metals. All right, so first up, we have oxygen gas. So it's just an oxygen atom bonded to another oxygen atom two non-metals, covalent bond. Same with nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas, just non-metals bonded together. Now H2O, water, right? Non-metal, non-metal, non-metal. So it has to be covalent. And then we look at ammonia. And so we have nitrogen, non-metal, hydrogen, non-metal. So it has to be covalent. And then methane, carbon, hydrogen, two nonmetals, it has to be covalent. All right, and so that's the basic kind of what is ionic, what is covalent. So generally, it's a metal and a nonmetal for ionic and covalent, nonmetal, nonmetal. And so we'll kind of just explain it shortly, but we'll see this later on. And so with ionics, why does it why is it a metal and a non-metal? And so it turns out that there will be an electron kind of um, drop off, I guess. Give away electrons. And so sodium and chlorine bond together to form sodium chloride. 
And so when they're just on their own, they're neutral. But once you put them next to each other, what happens is that the sodium wants to give away an electron. And so that's because that's how metals are. They want to give away their electrons. And so when we t start talking about valence electrons and electron orbitals and shells, this idea will make more sense. But basically, if you're on the left, it's easier for you to give away your electrons than it is to gain them. And if you're on the right, it's easier to gain them than it is to give them all away. And so sodium will give away one electron. And if it's giving away electrons, electrons are negatively charged. So it's getting rid of that negativity, right? And so that makes sodium positively charged. And then the chlorine's taking in the, the electrons, it's taking in that negativity. So it becomes negatively charged. And so this difference in charge is what makes this attraction. Because if you take something positively charged and negatively charged and you put them together, it turns out that this different these different charges attract each other. They want to come together and kind of stick. All right, and so that's what holds these ionic compounds together. All right, so just remember that the opposite charges form the bonds, or I guess they are the bonds. And so that's ionic. The metals give away the electrons. And so with covalent, it's a little different. Turns out that they share electrons. And so with ionic, this opposite charge forms the bond. But we don't see that with covalence. We see something different. So let's imagine a nucleus. And it's got some electrons around it. And let's say it just needs one more to become a little more stable. And then there's another atom over here with only one electron. And it needs seven more to become more stable. And so they can't really like, okay, you take this one, I'll, I'll be fine. What they do is they kind of merge together. And it's like, well, we just, we both want to have eight, right? So let's just combine, put all our electrons together. And now we have eight, right? And so this is what forms the covalent bond. They share the electrons. They kind of become one. And so this is just kind of a introduction to ionic and covalent um, molecules, compounds. And so we'll look at how to name these compounds. So if you look at something like this, you can say, okay, that's zinc sulfate or sulfide.
And so in the next video, that's what we'll be doing. We'll be naming these compounds. And so in order to do that, you have to be able to distinguish whether something is ionic or covalent. And so we'll do that in the next video.